والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يشتري لهو الحديث ليضل عن سبيل الله بغير علم ويتخذها هزوا أولئك لهم عذاب مهين Respected brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Insha'Allah, we will be continuing the discussion and the commentary of Surah Luqman, chapter 31 in the Quran. And after pointing out who are the ones who are worthy of receiving, receiving the guidance and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, and those are the victorious ones, the ones who pray, the ones who give alms, and the ones who believe in the afterlife, the verses move on to discuss a segment in society who go after, after speech that is only for amusement. And this brings up a very important topic since we're talking about the story of Luqman, Luqman who was a wise man. And this verse, these verses teach, teach us that if we want to be wise, if we want to have the wisdom that Luqman had, we have to be very careful in what we consume. A lot of us, when we talk about consumption, we think of food, we think of what we're eating, and we're very careful with what we eat. We're very careful what we, you know, place in our bodies, the food that we eat. We make sure it's clean. We make sure sometimes it's organic. And we have very strict requirements for the food that we consume. Well, there are other things that we consume that are not food. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us, wants to bring that to our attention. One thing is in this verse, in this verse, verse 6 of Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to our attention what we consume with regards to hearing. What are we taking in? What are we listening to? This is a very important subject. What are we taking in and listening to in our daily life? A lot of us were very careful when it comes to food. But we're not very careful when it comes to what we listen to, with what we look at. And these are very important things that have an impact on our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we are going to be held accountable for everything that we see, that we do, that we hear, that we say. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادِ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Be very careful and do not say what you don't have knowledge of because إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادِ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Your hearing and your sight and your heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold you accountable for. This is why when we fast in the month of Ramadan, a lot of us, we think that we're only fasting from food. We don't eat, but that's not only fasting. Fasting is when you have to control all of your organs. You control all of your desires. This is why the hadith says, إِذَا صُمْتَ فَلْيَصُمْ سمعك, سَمْعَكَ وبصرك. When you fast, let your hearing fast with you and let your eyesight fast with you. What does that mean? That means just as you have to control what you put in your food, in your stomach, the food that you eat, you also have to control what you go, what goes into your ears, what you listen to, and what you look at, what you allow yourself to look at. This is very important when it comes to what we're listening to. Throughout our whole lives, we're constantly listening to things. We're constantly being fed information. 
We're constantly hearing things all around us. You go outside, you turn on the TV, wherever you're at, at school, wherever, you're, wherever you go, you're constantly listening to things. A lot of the things that we listen to are perhaps not healthy for us. A lot of the things that we listen to are perhaps not good for us. Perhaps they have a negative impact on our lives. Allah says in the Quran, فَلْيَنظُرَ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Every insan, every human should look at their ta'am, should look at their food. One of the companions of Imam Al-Baqir السلام, the fifth Imam of Ahlul Bayt, he tells the Imam, what is it that we should look for? So the Imam السلام, he gives a tafsir, he gives an interpretation, a deeper interpretation of the verse in the Quran. He says, every person should look at their knowledge and where they take their knowledge from. We have food for thought and we have the food for our stomach. The food for thought can influence you and impact you either in a positive way or in a negative way. So this is why you have to be very careful what are your sources of information and where you're getting it from. Just two days ago, Donald Trump, he casually suggested that people could consume hand sanitizers and Clorox and these cleaning agents. And as a result of that, as a result of people listening and hearing things without filtering, without using their intellect to filter, a lot of people are hospitalized. There are people that are hospitalized because they're consuming cleaning agents, they're consuming Clorox. So this verse in the Quran, it brings to our attention the fact and the importance of paying attention to what we allow our ears to consume and the information that we are consuming. So Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And there are from amongst the people who buy, يَشْتَرِي who buy or who, who subscribe to لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ Hadith, speech, that is lahu, that is wasting time, that is distracting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lahu al-hadith, wa min al-nasi man yashtari lahu al-hadith liyudhilla an sabilillah. The purpose of it is to distract themselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distract themselves from the Qur'an bighayri ilm, without having knowledge without having knowledge, without knowing the consequences of actions. Some people, they go and they listen to things that are harmful. Some people, they go and they say things where other people they listen to that are harmful for them. وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزْوًا أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ And they make a mockery of the remembrance of Allah and the Qur'an. Those are people that will have a severe punishment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam in a hadith in tafsir al-Qummi and it is also narrated by others. He says that a merchant who was living in Mecca by the name of Al-Nadhar ibn al-Harith. This man was a merchant and he was a traveler. So he used to go and travel to other empires. He used to go and travel to the Persian Empire. And when he comes to Mecca, he sees that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is reciting the Qur'an. And in the Qur'an, there are some stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of Ad, the people of Thamud, the people of the Prophets, the people of Prophet Nuh. There are some stories in the Qur'an. But of course, the stories in the Qur'an, their purpose is not for storytelling and entertainment. The stories in the Qur'an, their purpose is for us to learn lessons, for us to, to learn from and to be inspired by. So this man, he sees Rasulullah is telling stories and or Rasulullah is reciting the Qur'an and within the Qur'an there are some stories. So in order to distract people from the Qur'an, what would he do? He would go and he would sit and he would tell them, let me tell you the stories of this empire and that empire. And his whole purpose, his whole aim 
was to distract people from the Qur'an. And some people, they're easily amused. Some people easily, they'll leave the Qur'an, they'll put the Qur'an which has the best of stories. Allah says in the Qur'an in Surah Yusuf, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ The best stories are in the Qur'an because these stories have lessons of morality, lessons in our lives. They have values, principles which make us live better lives. But some people, they leave these and they go and they'll read a fiction. They'll go and they'll read a story that will not help them. And they're easily distracted and they go to these lahu. Lahu is something that distracts you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوًا أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ And they do it بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ They do it without knowledge. This refers to both the one who's telling the story they say stories that have no foundation because as we mentioned previously yesterday, we mentioned that the stories and whatever the Qur'an mentions, it's all wisdom. The Qur'an does not say anything that is not truth. Everything that the Qur'an says is absolute truth and it will remain to be truth. And this is the sign of a wise person. But someone who's not wise, they'll, say, they'll talk gibberish. They'll say things that have no meaning. They'll say stories that are made up and... This is without ilm, بغير ilm, without knowledge. And this also refers to the ones who consume knowledge. Some people, they're being fooled. Some people, they see someone talking and they'll go and they'll listen to this person without having knowledge that they're being misled. Without having knowledge that they're being fooled. And then Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا وَلَّا مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعْهَا كَأَنَّ فِي أُذُنَيْهِ وَقَرًا فَبَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And when our verses, when our signs, when our verses, the verses of the Qur'an are recited to him, he turns away arrogantly. See, sometimes someone does not listen to the Qur'an, but it's not because of arrogance. Maybe they're distracted, maybe something happened in their life. But there are some individuals that arrogantly, because of their pride, they refuse to listen to the Qur'an and they act as if they have not heard the verses of the Qur'an. They act as if their ears are deaf. This is what the people of the prophets used to do. The people of Prophet Nuh, the people of other prophets, they used to pass by the prophets and they used to put their hand, their fingers in their ears so that they don't listen to the maw'adha, to the admonishments of the prophets. Similarly, the people of Quraysh, Whenever someone would come to Mecca, a someone who's new coming to Mecca, Rasulullah would be by the Kaaba reciting the Quran, and they would tell the people, they would tell the people, cover your ears, don't listen to what this man is saying. And they don't want people to hear what the Prophet is saying, so they start making up, they start ridiculing. Like this man, another ibn al-Harith, he goes and he ridicules and he makes a joke and he starts telling other stories. They say that Abu Jahl, he used to also ridicule the Prophet. He used to tell the Prophet, he used to tell the people, he used to make up things and trying to mislead people away from the Prophet. So Allah says in the Quran, فَبَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ The one who does that, give this person glad tidings. بَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Why بَشِّرْهُ? Because the person is joking. The person is laughing. So now in a laughing way, come and tell him, okay, you're going to be punished as a result of your arrogance, as a result of what you're doing. Now, this is لهو الحديث. الذين, uh, ومن الناس من يشتري لهو الحديث. Now, this verse has several interpretations. And as we mentioned, there is no problem with the Quran having more than one meaning. The Qur'an is an eternal book. The Qur'an is a book that is alive until today. The meanings of the Qur'an and the, the uh, precise exegesis of the Qur'an is not confined to 1400 years ago. The Qur'an is always alive. It's always relevant. So this is why the Qur'an could have more than one meaning. It could have layers of meanings. So one of the 
one of the ways that we can understand this today, Lahul Hadith, at that time that man was telling stories. Today, how are we wasting our time? How are we spending our time today? Today we see so many people wasting their time on social media. What are we getting out of social media? Of course, I'm not denying that there's a lot of good in social media. But there's also a lot of bad. You go and you look at the accounts on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, whatever it is. Most of them, the ones that have the most following, they're all based on entertainment. Now, I'm not saying that all entertainment is wrong. Entertainment is not bad. There's nothing wrong with being entertained. However, if that entertainment is going to distract you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it becomes problematic then we need to check our sources of information. Then we need to check what are we listening to, what are we giving our ears to, our attention to. Some people, they sit for hours and hours, they watch these YouTubers. YouTubers who are pulling pranks, who are doing things that are wasting time. What are you going to benefit from this? What are you going to get out of this? If you're sitting after an hour or two hours or three hours, after those three hours are over, what did you accomplish? Did you accomplish something for this dunya? If you did, then that's good. Did you accomplish something for the akhirah? If you did, then that's even better. But some people, they didn't get anything. Not the dunya and not the akhirah. So that's when it becomes problematic. Now, as we mentioned, the tafsir of the Quran, could, the exegesis could have more than one meaning. So one of the meanings of this verse, lahwul hadith, is something that is very relevant in our communities and it's something that distracts many people until today. It was something that existed during the time of the Prophet, during the times of the Imams, and it exists until today. And that is the amusement speech. What type of amusement speech? What is something that we all, li that people listen to and it's easily, it's, uh, people get distracted very easily from it. That is music. Music is everywhere. You turn on the TV, you hear music. You go out, wherever you are, you hear music. Now, there are types of music, the majority of the types of music are considered to be haram, are considered to be lahwul hadith because it distracts you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the narration, another, another hadith, another narration, it says that this verse, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And this is accepted by Sunni and Shia scholars. It says that a man from during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he purchased a slave who used to sing for him. A lady slave who used to, at that time people used to purchase slaves. So he purchased a slave who used to sing for him. And as a result of that, that would distract him away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have many narrations, we have multiple narrations from Rasulullah and from the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, which define lahwul hadith as a general meaning, any type of talk that distracts you away from Allah, any type of amusement speech that will bring you away from Allah, and specifically, one definition of that is music and singing and ghina. And this is from the hadith of the Ahlul Bayt and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In a hadith from Imam Sadiq, he says, al ghina majlis la Allah ila ahlih. Sitting in a session where there's music being played, this is a session where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at the people who are sitting. How will Allah not look at them? Allah will not look at them with His mercy. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people, they will be stripped of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Imam, he continues, he says, وَهُوَ مِمَّا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Then the Imam, he talks about ghina and singing and that type of session. And then he says, this is the session that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as from those who يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ Who buy or subscribe to talk that is only amusement and that distracts them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with this verse we understand there are two meanings. Anything that distracts you away from Allah is 
and specifically music and singing and these types of sessions. Now, someone might ask, and a lot of people, they find this really difficult to comprehend. Why? Because music is such an integral part of communities, of cultures, and some people, they say, how could Islam, the religion of Islam, why? Why would it come and stand against music? Why is it haram? What is the proof that it's haram and are all types of music haram? These are questions that people ask. And I don't blame people because people are, you're, you're living in a society when something becomes accepted, when something is encouraged, you start saying that it's okay after a while. After a while, you start seeing that it's totally okay. This is something that we have to be careful of. Because we have our own principles. We have our own faith. We have our own teachings. We should not fall in the traps of what society is doing. Because not everything that's going on in society is correct. Rasulullah says, There will come a time at the end of time where people will see the munkar, what's bad as good, and they will see what's good as bad. So there's a lot of things that go on in societies today that they were bad, they're, they're, they're originally bad, and people look at them as good. And people that, things that are good, people consider them to be bad. So we have, we have um, some hadith, we have some narrations which talk about music. And the tafsir of these verses in the Qur'an from Rasulullah and from the Ahlul Bayt, from the correct channels that we're supposed to take our information from, they come and they tell us to abstain from anything that distracts you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first proof is Surah Luqman, the surah that we are speaking about, verse 6, the, 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 the verse that we are speaking about. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ The tafsir of the Imams in the Sunni and the Shi'i tafsir, they say that the amusement speech is music. In another, in another verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Qawl al-Zur. Allah says in Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22, verse 30, Qawl al-Zur. And refrain and be away from the uncleanliness of idols and avoid false statements. Awthan, Wathan is an idol and Qawl al-Zur is false statements. Now as we mentioned, the Qur'an can have multiple meanings because the Qur'an is still relevant in our lives. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, the sixth Imam of Ahlul Bayt, he says that the Awthan they were idols at the pre-Islamic time. When Rasulullah was bringing down the Qur'an and revealing the Qur'an to the people, the Qur'an was telling people, stay away from idols. But now that everyone is a Muslim, the Qur'an, does it make sense for the Qur'an to tell Muslims, stay away from idols? No. Here, the Imam, he says there's something else. He says, he says, فَاجْتَنِبُ الرِّجْسَ مِنَ الْأَوْثَانِ The Imam, alayhi salam, he says this is chess, playing chess. And then he says, وَاجْتَنِبُوا قَوْلَ الزُّورِ And refrain from قول الزور, false statements. The Imam alayhi salam, he says, قول الزور هو الغناء. It is singing and music. So this is one hadith from the Imam. And this is a hadith that is accepted by the scholars. Now yes, regarding chess, some scholars they come and they say, at that time, chess used to be an, a, an, a, uh, a tool for gambling. That's why it was haram. Now, because it's not considered for gambling, there are some scholars that consider it halal. However, قول الزور, قول الزور, uh, غناء, we have it's as if a consensus amongst the scholars, especially the Shia and many of the Sunni scholars, with the exception of some small groups here and there, maybe the Sufis or others, where, um, where music is allowed. But the majority of Muslims, they come and they say, music is not allowed, and it goes back to the Qur'an and the hadith of Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt. In another verse, another proof is Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, verse 72. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, 
والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما and they are those referring to the believers, the mu'mineen they are those who do not testify they don't listen to, they're not watching they're not listening to falsehood and, they, and when they pass near ill speech they pass with dignity here the Imam alayhi salam says az-zur, qawl az-zur is singing and in addition to the tafsir of the Quran in addition to the verses of the Quran we have Narrations from Rasulullah and from the Ahlul Bayt. Rasulullah, he says, Kana Iblis awwal man taghanna. And you find a lot of these narrations in our books of hadith in Usul al Kafi. And also in Wasail al Shia, you could find them. Kana Iblis awwal man taghanna. The first one who began to sing was Iblis, Shaytan. In another hadith, وجاء في حديث آخر عن الإمام الصادق عليه السلام إن حديث from إمام الصادق he says بيت الغناء لا تؤمن فيه الفجيعة ولا تجاب فيه الدعوة ولا يدخله الملك ولا يدخله الملك he says بيت الغناء the place the house where music is constantly being played in لا تؤمن فيه الفجيعة a catastrophe will fall upon this house وَلَا تُجَابُ فِيهِ الدَّعْوَةِ And the dua, the supplication is not answered in that dua, in that house, in that place where music is constantly being played. وَلَا يَدْخُلُهُ الْمَلَكِ And the angels will not enter it. Now what does this mean? Does this mean that if there's music being played in the house, a catastrophe will fall, someone's going to get injured, there's going to be an accident? No. What this verse is referring to, and uh, what this hadith is referring to, لا تؤمن فيه الفجيعة, is the fajia when it comes to faith. The fajia, the calamity in faith, not the calamity in your body. Your body might, nothing might happen to it. But in your, in your connection with God, and when you, with your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is where there's going to be a calamity. Because when there's music, there's going to be dancing, there's going to be mixed gender gatherings, there's going to be lyrics that are inappropriate, there's going to be a lot of things that bring you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a place where people are distracted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تُسْتَجَابُ فِيهَا الدَّعْوَةِ And therefore, when you are distracted from Allah, when God is not in your mind, then naturally your dua is not going to be answered. And وَلَا يَدْخُلُهُ الْمَلَكِ The angels will not enter in a place like that because the angels they're pure, the angels they're tahir, and they only enter somewhere that is clean, somewhere that is pure and that is cleansed. So this is what the Imam is talking about. A catastrophe will fall, a catastrophe in your religion, in your faith. That is the worst type of catastrophe. That is the calamity, the greatest calamity that could fall upon someone. In another hadith, the Imam says, Al-ghina yurithu nifaq wa ya'qibu al-faqr. The Imam says, ghina, singing, it brings about hypocrisy. It will create a sense of hypocrisy and it will bring poverty. Now also here, someone might ask, how is it that if I'm listening to music, I'm going to be a hypocrite? Where's the correlation between listening to music and becoming a hypocrite? I'm a truthful person, I'm honest with people, I don't lie to people. This is not the hypocrisy that we're talking about. Here also, we have to understand, in order to analyze and understand this hadith, we have to see what is the purpose of my life. What's my purpose in life? My purpose is to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created the jinn and the humans except so that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a goal. We have a purpose in life and that is to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is whether we accept that this is our goal or we don't, we are all going to Allah. We're all headed to Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqih. O insan, O human, you are striving 
to your Lord until you will eventually meet your Lord. Eventually you're going to meet your Lord. So if you're going to meet your Lord, then doesn't that mean that you have to be ready? Doesn't that mean that you have to be prepared in order to meet your Lord? Yes, we have to be prepared. This is why we pray. This is why we cleanse our souls. This is why we have to purify our hearts. This is why we have to prepare ourselves for the afterlife and the akhirah. Now, I ask you a question. When you listen to music, does music help you prepare for the afterlife? Does music help you fulfill your purpose and your goal in life and that is to get closer to God? Unfortunately, most types of music, the amusement music does not do that. The amusement music, it distracts you away from your purpose. It brings you away from your goal. And therefore, that will create a sense of hypocrisy. Where your soul is begging, it's yearning for something, and your actions are giving it something else. Your actions are doing something else. So here there is a, a, a type of inconsistency, a type of hypocrisy that is going on. So this is why when the Imam says, al ghina music, nifaq, it brings hypocrisy. This is what the Imam is talking about. It's going to make you go away from your purpose. Your purpose is to get closer to Allah. Your purpose is to connect with God. Your purpose is to prepare yourself for the Akhirah. But music does not do that. Music, all that it's talking about is this life, this dunya, loving, cars, bling bling, here and there. This is, the mu this is what's music. This is in the lyrics. The lyrics are many times inappropriate, many times only centered on this dunya and only focused on the entertainment and the enjoyment of this dunya, a lot of selfish reasons. And the way that it's sung, science has proven today that music, when it's being sung or a song, it has a psychological impact on your, on your brain. It has an impact on your soul. You kind of start getting connected with whatever is being recited, with whatever is being said. So when that happens, then a person will be taken away from their mission and taken away from their goals. Now, is all music haram? Here, some scholars, the scholars, they say the majority of the music is considered haram as long as it has tarab. It has that feeling where it brings you away from Allah and that feeling of entertainment which distracts you away from God. This would, would be considered lahw al-hadith. It would be considered, it would be considered qawl al-zur. It would be considered talk that distracts you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now some people ask, what about classical music or things that are soft, things that do not bring us away. There are some scholars, they come and they say classical music is halal or music that fulfills a purpose, a type of music which is not considered music anymore. It fulfills a purpose of bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing wrong with reciting with a beautiful voice. There's nothing wrong with finding entertainment through a means that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people they say, but I can't live my life like that. I need to listen to something. Yes, you need to listen to something. There's so many things you could listen to. You could listen to the Qur'an. The Qur'an, it's recommended. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا The Qur'an, it's recommended to recite it in the most beautiful voice. So we have to recite it in a beautiful voice. And that is something that you just have to get yourself used to. Reciting, listening to dua being recited in a beautiful voice. There's so many things that you could be listening to. A lot of people, when they're listening in the car, going back and forth from work to home, you know, back in the days when people used to leave their house, now everyone is at home. That is hours and hours spent that you could utilize for something that will make you a better person, something that will be productive. But some people, hours and hours they're listening to music and hours and hours they're listening to music. Listen to something that will help you. 
This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ad kullu ula'ika kana anhu mas'ula. Allah is going to hold you accountable. What were you looking at? What were you feeding your eyes? Meaning giving it to look at. What were you giving your, what were you consuming? What were you listening to? This is very, you have to be very careful with that. We have to filter what comes in and what we allow to enter in our thought process. And music is something that is dangerous. So we have to abstain from it. We have to stay away from it because it is lahwul hadith. And we have to refrain from any talk that distracts us and brings us away from Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ النَّعِيمِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ Allah says those who believe, those who have iman, they will unconditionally, they will immediately accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering them. Even something that might not make sense to me, I will accept it. Because I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for me something that is much greater in the afterlife. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to protect you all. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahirin. Nas'aluka Allahumma wa nad'uk bismika al-azim al-a'zam. Al-a'az al-ajal al-akram ya Allah. يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم اكسو كل عريان اللهم اقضي دين كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم اصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين اللهم اقض عنا الدين واغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير والى ارواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحه مع الصلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد